Would you bully another kid at school because he talked funny or didn't have nice clothes? I certainly hope not. However, even if you wouldn't bully someone, which I don't think most of you would do, would you stand up for someone who was being bullied? Many people who wouldn't bully someone won't stand up for someone being bullied. Standing up for someone who is being bullied requires a lot of courage. You might end up getting bullied after all. We see something like this with the king of Judah we are looking at today. This king's name was Jotham. He was a pretty good and godly king. He did many good things for God. Yet Christians shouldn't just do good things, but also stand against evil things. There were some evil things going on in Judah. Jotham didn't participate or encourage them, just like you might not participate or encourage bullying. But Jotham didn't put a stop to those things. He should have spoken out against them. And as king, he should have stopped them. But he didn't, and it would lead to some great problems. Jotham was the 13th king of Judah. He became king around 750 BC. We learn from him from 2 Chronicles chapter 27. He actually started ruling as king of Judah while his father was still alive. Remember, Uzziah, Jotham's father, had to go live in isolation because God gave Uzziah leprosy for his arrogant sin. We read in verse 2 that Jotham did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He built on to the temple of the Lord. He built cities for the people of Judah. He trusted the Lord, and the Lord gave him victory over the Ammonites. And so we read in 2 Chronicles 27, 6, So Jotham became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord his God. But you know what Jotham didn't do? He didn't speak out against or remove the places where the people of Judah worshipped idols. As king, he should have removed these. These idols weren't God. And the Lord was God of Israel and him alone. Do you remember the first commandment? You shall have no other gods. Jotham didn't have any other gods, which was good. But the people had other gods, and Jotham didn't do anything about it. He didn't speak out against it, and as king, he did not remove those idols. You might remember from a while ago that King Asa and Jehoshaphat had crushed such idols, but Jotham did nothing, and the people worshipped these idols and acted corruptly. Much bad would come of Judah's idolatry. At the end of Jotham's reign, God sent two countries, northern Israel and Syria, against Judah to punish them. Also, Jotham's own son was enticed by the idol worship of the people of Judah so that he did not serve God like his father Jotham had. We will hear more about this son of Jotham next week. But today, we have seen that Jotham's failure to stand against evil allowed evil to increase. We shouldn't just not be bullies. We should stand up for those who are being bullied. We shouldn't just not do evil. We should also stand up against evil. Jotham failed to do this. And often, don't we as well? We surely do. And like Jotham, our failures can cause evil to increase. But you know who did stand against sin always? Jesus, of course. God can't stand sin. He won't accept it. And yet God still wanted to save Jotham and you and me and all people. So Jesus came and stood in our place to be punished for our sins. This Jesus did because he loves us. He did this so that all who believe in him, like Jotham and you and me, even though we have failed and sinned, we will not perish in hell but have everlasting life through Jesus. This is how God is against evil and also saved us from the evil things we have done. We have a wonderful Savior, don't we? Our Bible passage from the week is Romans 4, 7. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Who is it who forgives and covers their sins? It's Jesus. So let's write this on our heart. Romans 4, 7. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Our lawless deeds include not just the things that we have done wrong to others, but also when we haven't stood up against evil. Our catechism for the week is the first petition of the Lord's Prayer. A petition is a request. And what's the first petition of the Lord's Prayer? Hallowed be your name. What does this mean? God's name is holy all by itself, but we pray in this petition that we too may keep it holy. 
So say it with me. First petition, hallowed be your name. We want God's name to be used in a holy way, in a good way, because he has done wonderful things for us. And that's true whether we use his name properly or not. But we want his name to be used wonderfully and used correctly so that others might know what great things God has done for them. So, say the explanation with me. What does this mean? God's name is holy all by itself. But we pray in this petition that we too may keep it holy.